vintage series, man. Det skulle være sådan lidt vintage. So we had the Amberg celebration yesterday, and this was like magical because we've been working on this project for so long, and it was uh, a series of pedals that was created out of passion for these amps. Kan du se det igen? Vi kan styre på noget guitar. Noget ja, ja, er du sindssygt mange fede guitar. Også den der mærkelige ES. Yes. Klar, Anders. Klar, Mads. Hvad så? Hvad så? Hej. Hej. The celebration! Woo! Skål alle sammen, og øh, velkommen til. I må meget gerne komme lidt tættere på. I should probably do this in English. Today we celebrate the achievement and we brought in Mika Vanborg. Woo! Yeah. I would like to invite Jose as well, one of the lead engineers on this, uh, this project. Come on, Jose. So the thing is, we wanted to, uh, to, to have a conversation about some of the pedals and some of the, maybe get some juicy stories. The ones that are not too secret. Yeah. Just a little bit secret. Maybe a little bit secret. <laughs> It was quite an interesting task to capture that, right? Yes, yes, because four seconds of IR is not an easy task. Capturing an IR of a second or two is relatively easy, the right conditions. But four seconds starts to get technically uh, a little bit challenging. So we tried different methods. We put the, the reverb into uh, some sponges, some pillows, some things to try to get it really, really quiet, no vibration, no noise. And it was still impossible to get four seconds of really clean measurement. So in the end, I had to set it up all completely let's say, uh, stable, independent and all that. And I started a measurement at around midnight, which ran at, up to like five in the morning. So we keep taking samples and samples and samples. And it was the only way because otherwise, it, it, the whole thing was just acting like a microphone. And every time somebody passing by, even 10 meters away, you could just hear that into the recording. <laughs> so uh, it's a midnight recordings, I guess, <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of the real time. Night session. Yes. <laughs> can, can we hear the reverb? We have some great stories from Jose who was telling about what the development process and how he took away, uh, took apart amps. But I know we also have some more histories. This is Mr. Lars Arknes. Hi, Hello, Hello, Michael. Hello. Is it all right I'm here? Yes, that's fine. Okay, good. <coughs> I have spent uh, years uh, working with Jose uh, in these modeling things. Yeah. And the approach is that, uh, that we spend a lot of time uh, getting the equipment, because the amp is the important thing. Very carefully measured all the, the bias voltages and the, the behavior of the amp, the dynamics of the amp. And uh, in parallel with that process, I made a, uh, a SPICE model, uh, mm -hmm. which you can see partly here, that's the preamp section you see here. And uh, we, we tried to, to make this model so it uh, reacted exactly like the real amp. Mm -hmm. But what we stumbled upon was that we noticed that there was some deviations between the theoretical correct model and the real life. So this is a theoretical... Yes, here? this is... But what we noticed, there was some crosstalk inside the vacuum tube itself. So some small capacitance, mm -hmm. uh, parasitic effects. That, But we wanted to model this as well to get the exact same behavior as the real amp. So in this case, you see uh, the, the block diagram of the algorithm that models the physical amp, and you notice these two small blocks 
that implements this crosstalk phenomena we stumbled upon. Well, thanks, Lars. Awesome to be uh, welcome. Uh, uh, look in inside your brain. Yes. <laughs> and I, I think uh, if you guys want more of that, you should just say it because I think Lars is super eager to be more on video. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you can put in top of mind about the, yes, the DC30? Uh, yeah, well, two things. Now you mentioned there's a blue box. A lot of people get uh, a bit confused because, well, the box is red. Yeah. Actually, many of the early issues of the AC30, they had a blue panel. And that's the reason why this one is blue because we really wanted to go back to the absolute most original design of this amplifier. It had a blue panel. Yeah. Um, I thought it was due to be an blue speaker. No. Ah. So, uh, Sorry, was it not blue before the chop boots came in? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it is not technically... <laughs> <laughs> it's not technically correct to have a blue box with a top boost in it, but of course we wanted everything of everything. Mm -hmm. So the best yeah. generation of the speakers it. and the transformers, and also a top boost just for the versatility. So. Yes, you know your AC30 stuff. That's my aim. <laughs> <laughs> it has a boost function? It does. Yeah. Quite rock and roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, yeah, we, we did the same uh, with this amp as with the others, of course. So in terms of uh, starting from the amp and then figuring out how to put it into a box. But there was a point where we thought, for some reason, we're getting a, a, a bit of a weird bass distortion into the real amp, which we also have in house when we turn it really up loud. And we came up with a few esoteric theories of yeah, you know, this is probably some interaction between the impedance of the speaker and the transformer. And we went back and forth, and eventually I took it all apart, and the front panel was just broken. <laughs> <laughs> so that goes to show that sometimes we really think a little bit too much about this. Yeah. What are you working on? What? You got some danglers on us, I know that. Now I'm working on uh, how we're going to process uh, on our next products. Oh. That uh, might or might not have uh, multiple cores okay. in it, so it's a bit Interesting. of uh, multi-threading uh, audio processing. Uh, it's pretty advanced. Intrigued. I don't, I don't understand half of it. No, but I'm, I'm just. I'm but just somehow you get by and, and and get things done, right? I mean, Google is a really good. Yeah. So, and chat GPT as well. That's good. <laughs> well, you guys can guess what Anas is working on. Uh, hell, I don't have any idea of it, but uh, or maybe I don't bit. either. So it's okay. Someday something will pop up. You guys working on something interesting? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it secret? It's yeah. like super secret. <laughs> so then we want to know about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do it. Don't look at that. Okay, okay, okay. And my computer. This is all of the user research. User research? Yeah. Interesting. So where we get the users into the process of actually being a part of the product. I think that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I won't crash your meeting anymore, but thanks guys. No problem. And I think uh, we've been waiting for this moment. And of course, it's the Jim's 45. Should I play some, maybe a riff someone knows? Yes. yes. <laughs> play. <laughs> to get uh, Sir Anderson's own uh, original Plexi. Which is now modded. Yes, but at the time it yes. was completely original. I know. And uh, so I, I, we met with him and uh, we asked him, hey, can we get this just for a few weeks so I can really study and learn from it, all the details. Yes, of course, of course. And, but I had to say, but I need to tell you that I'm gonna take it apart. Okay, I'm gonna take it apart fully. Okay, but you know, I can be careful and stuff. So I did, uh, of course, I borrowed it. I was very careful, took it completely apart. We learned as much about it as we could. And careful, uh, careful about all the stories because Mika, he knows that amp and he, he might hit you. <laughs> <laughs> and then nothing else happened. Okay. It sounds the same on the records. I always use that when we do the electric guitars records. That's mine. Well, we, we actually and did put it back together all well. So <laughs> okay, okay. it didn't. 
But the, the thing is, he came back to TZ, that was this one in Sindel's Vibe. Mm. And I think he saw a little bit too much. <laughs> he wasn't ready for the guts. <laughs> <laughs> Exploded apart. <laughs> And when I put it back together, which I did very carefully, you couldn't tell that it had been mm. completely disassembled. But it, it took it back home, and then a couple of weeks later, we figured, ah, this this all the tiny little detail that I would have really measured. Can I borrow it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Going through that again. So uh, we got what we got. We actually did have plenty of time, so he was very generous with that. And even though this amplifier actually sounds uh, caught fire at some point, and there was a part of this chassis completely burned. Mm -hmm. The important things, they all survived. Huh. So it's a, just very, very lucky that he's made it all this long, and then we were able to get the essence of it and hopefully put it into the, the amboids correctly. Well, that's very genius to actually... This is captured from an amp that's been on fire. It is. Yeah. 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 Rock on. <laughs> Use that in the promo. <laughs> <laughs> We have uh, the Legato team over here. The reason it's called Legato is because they're super fast and fluid. What are you working on, Christian? Um, some of the updates for the Pletra X5. Ooh, and that's interesting. Yes, uh, there will be uh, quite a lot of stuff uh, regarding uh, tap tempo, MIDI, okay. MIDI tempo and stuff like that. Uh, my colleague uh, Matthias uh, is working on that. You have to see this uh, department. Hello, Mike. Hello. I'm filming you. Yeah, welcome. This is the, the testing dungeon, right? Yes. And uh, anything interesting you're testing today? Yeah, well, we are ramping up. Here we can see the new tap tuner block. So if I press and hold, so I get the tuner shown. So, mm. and uh, well, it uh, works nice. So and this time it's and also in tune. And you can tap the tempo as well on that. Yes. So if I press one more, I'm uh, out. And if you, if I press tempo, now you can see the BPM uh, is, uh, is changing and you can also see here our delay time. Yeah, I think there's a couple of guys out here eager waiting to uh, get cracking on some some hard rock. I think that's totally honest. <laughs> yep. Then uh, let's, get, let's get a full band and then have some fun. Free t-shirts for everybody! <laughs> one of my good friends and very great guitar player and producer in-house today. Hello, Gaspar! Hello! So uh, he comes for the after party because he missed it yesterday. I did. Now we're here. Now we're here and we are trying out some of the pedals. So um, what are we playing on now? We're playing on the DC-30, which is kind of my thing. Yeah. Yeah. But now in a in a pedal edition. You actually you tried this amp in an earlier state with one of the in a very early stage. Yeah, 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 yeah I did. Uh, and now it's just even even better. You know, it's. Oh, it's, I'm, gl it's I'm glad we yeah. did something in Ooh. the last three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's just have some fun and. Thanks for being here and play a little bit. Yeah. Awesome. We will. <laughs>
pleasure showing you guys the, the site here today. And if you want more content like this, let us know. I mean, we are every all the time playing with artists, developing the product together with them. We are based here in Denmark. We are more than 50 engineers, and uh, we would like to show us show you guys what what who we actually are. So, if you are up for that, let us know, and uh, see you out there. Goodbye to the to our dear audience here. Have a great day. You have Thank to say you. like and subscribe and all that YouTube thing. Ah, <laughs> you really have you really have to like and subscribe this one because Michael has made a huge effort today, I'm sure. So so remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you.